All right, welcome everybody to our Facebook Pilates Rounds group today. We are talking about HIP today. That was the focus of our session. So I was going to open up the floor to see what everybody else had in mind. And then I like to wrap things up at the end or add in. I always have an opinion for some reason about these things, but I will see if anybody's interested in adding in. So you know, I'll, I'll go first. I'm going to just go the, the mellow route, but I'll go first. So yeah, I guess talking about the hips, um, my body, I guess I struggle with, um, I have some SI stuff. So, I mean, as you know, um, and I've just been thinking a lot about, okay, getting stronger, glutes but i think the most challenging thing is for me is um i'm finding that especially i need to like open up my hips in order to do good hip work so like going on the roller first and one of the my challenges right now is trying to get that lateral side leg lift because i um yeah it's just i just find that super challenging um so yeah, I guess I'll just show you what um, my little routine um, that I find just really helpful. Um, so just, yeah, we just start laying down and um, I guess grab a strap or a belt. Okay, you've probably done it a hundred times, but um, we'll stay in it a little longer this time since we're in our own, our own class here. So, well, I guess first, you know, let's just, all relax and get started. Let's just, can we do some coccyx curls first just to relax um, the back? So just gonna inhale, exhale, letting the belly fall and using the belly just to tilt the hips. And then reversing that back to neutral. Breath in, breathing into the body, front, side, and back. Exhaling all the air, and then tilting the hips. Coccyx curl, and then undo that motion. And then we'll do one last one, inhale. And exhale. Feeling your head and neck relax as you bring the breath out and think about your back wall of your abdomen coming closer to your spine as you tilt your hips. All right, and back to neutral. Okay, so now ready for the stretch since our spine, I, have, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't done anything today. So I just wanted to get my spine a little like, what's going on here? Okay. So let's start, we'll bring um, one leg up to the sky. And I, just, I have my strap doubled and um, I have it over my right leg and I have it on my, um, kind of like the ball of the foot, not the arch. So the ball of the foot is helping to support a little bit. So we're not just like collapsing. And then I'm bending my other knee and just gonna feel my hips settling into the mat and trying to feel both um, hip bones on the mat. And for me, that means I take my uh, stance leg out a little bit. Just trying to keep the shoulders relaxed. And then I'm going to, um, this is a little bit different than a stretch that we do is I'm going to bring the leg down a little bit and have the strap just press against the foot. So it's kind of like this uh, push pull. So I'm just letting the foot kind of hang in the strap a little bit like a hammock. So I think it's more of like a passive stretch. And so I have my leg down a little bit lower And then bring it back up so you can feel a stretch. And then I'm going to think about um, flexing my hamstring. I mean, sorry, my glute. 
But for me, in order to do that, I actually have to bring my leg down a little bit because it doesn't know how to get there. And then I'm gonna bring it back up. So I feel a nice strength in my leg. And then that other foot that's on the floor, thinking about the foot, just like all points of the foot on the floor, the ball of the foot, the heel. Okay, trying to just let relax happen. All right, and then I'm gonna bring the other leg down and grab the strap in the opposite hand. And for an outer hip stretch, I'm gonna bring the foot across the body and I'm going to slightly externally rotate my hip a little bit. I just, I find that it just helps me feel the stretch better. Um, I used to say, you know, sickle the foot a little bit, but that's, that's not good practice. So turning that hip out and then just practicing, you know, like I have that hip, both hips on the mat. And then from here, if you want, and um, if you not limited in rotation, um, you can bring uh, your foot all the way to the floor. You're rotating the spine. And then I'm looking over that opposite shoulder, or if that's too much for you, just look towards the foot that's in the air. And I have my belly in here, and my, my foot is kind of hovering off the mat. All right, then I'm going to bring that leg back up. And then I'm just going to point and flex the foot a couple times, point and flex. And then I'm going to rotate in one direction and then the other direction. And then I'm going to bend the opposite knee again and foot's flat on the floor, hips are even. And I'm gonna bring the leg with the strap out to the side and I'm gonna open the opposite knee. I like this because I'm really floppy in the hips and I'm still using my belly to support my legs here, but I find that for me, I can keep, I'm training my, uh, the opposite hip bone to stay more towards the mat. Keep the shoulders relaxed. And if you want to bring the leg out further, feel more of a stretch. So right now I have that foot in the strap and I actually have my elbow on the floor. And always, you know, you guys are teachers, always just do what feels good for you. All right, and then the same time, bring the knee in and that leg up. Good. And then from there, I'm going to bend the knee toward my chest and bring the opposite leg out to just feel a stretch in the hip flexor, so kind of like in a squat position. And I have my knee right about at my underarm. And it's like I'm pressing my foot up into the ceiling. And I'm in a neutral spine. I'm trying to just release a little bit more each time I exhale. All right. And then I'm going to... Um, gracefully put the other foot in the strap. So I'm going to bring both legs up into the air and I'm going to place the left foot, my left foot in the strap and <clears throat> just going to feel my spine lengthened and I feel stretched in the back of that leg. And then I'm going to bring, actually bring my leg down to about knee height. And just let, again, let the um, leg just sort of hang, feel supported in the socket, but I'm, I'm pulling the strap against the foot. 
just to create some resistance. And I'm just pushing out a little bit with the heel. That's a passive stretch. And then bringing the leg back up. And breathing. Right. And then straightening the opposite leg and then bringing the leg across the body and rotating the thighs slightly. And now feel a nice stretch on the outside of my hip there. And I have that opposite hand. Um, Pointing out to the opposite side. Okay, now using my belly, I'm gonna bring, let my leg come closer to the floor. Okay, supporting it, but getting a stretch at the same time. I'm trying to think about just feeling nice and long in the torso and long in the leg. Okay, and now I'm gonna use my oblique as I bring the leg up. Okay. And then holding the strap again with both legs. And I'm going to point, flex, and point. And then point, flex, and point. And then make a circle with the foot. And then the other direction. And then bending the opposite knee, but flat on the floor, getting my um, hips feeling evenly on the mat. And then I'm gonna open my knee out to the right and my straight leg goes out to the left. And I'm using the support of my belly make this happen. You may not have a problem that I have, but if I don't support my belly, I'm, my legs are just gonna like flop out to the side and then it's gonna go into my back. So just breathing and holding the strap, trying to keep um, the shoulders relaxed. And I'm thinking about pulling um, the underarm closer to the hip to activate that side body. Okay, and then bring the leg back up and the knee comes up at the same time. And then I'm gonna pull on the strap with both hands and pressing that knee down towards my armpit. So hip flexor stretch. Okay, and then so here I have my heel is um, a little bit back from my knee. I just, I see my toes right over my forehead. And I'm pressing my tailbone down towards the mat to help me get in my neutral spine. Which feels better. Okay, and that other leg is just nice and long. All right, and then bring both legs back into the straps and then just, um, yep, and then opening the legs out to the side for happy baby pose. So both hip bones on the mat and I'm just feeling an opening. So just a continuation of that last pose, We're just getting it in both hips. Feels so good. Keep the neck relaxed. And 
and I'm kind of, um, my feet are flat, almost, but I'm trying to hold up the ceiling a little bit, keeping some engagement in my belly. Otherwise, I'll go into an arch back. And try to feel if my hips are even here. All right, and we're going to just bring our knees to our chest and the strap comes down to the side. And that's my little hip opening sequence for you. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. So on that note, I would love to add in one thing that I find really in the, in the on that note of hip opening, I'd love to add in something that I've been doing, stole it from physical therapy, which is where I steal a lot of things from. But sometimes it also feels good if the hips are really tight in the joint is to do a little bit of hip traction. Mm. So I found a way to sort of self mobilize that. I think it works better with a not stretchy strap if you have one. Mm -hmm. If not, you could tie your strap, you could tie your band, a nice thick band you could tie that could work too, and, and you could eventually do it. So what I'll do is just feed it through. It doesn't have to be too, there's not a specific length that it has to be. Uh, so kind of a medium, I would say, length, and or kind of long. And then what I like to do is, there's a way to do it that the most effective way is to do it with two straps, but I think it's really tedious. So I've started just doing it with the one strap. And if I wanted to traction my left hip, I would put the band, the strap over my left thigh and then take my right foot and put it in the strap, put it against the strap here. And I'll put that right uh, heel on the floor. I actually didn't tighten my band, my strap enough. All right, so then I'll put my right heel on the floor. Then I want to bring this, the, the strap right into my hip crease. And I can hold this leg here or just on top, whatever feels better to you. Trying to really relax this leg more than anything. And now I made my strap too short, sorry. So then here you want to push this foot away. There we go. And I, as I'm holding this relaxed foot, I'm working the leg here that's pushing away and I can really get a bit of a hip traction on my left leg. So I just sit with it and let it pull at my hip here for a bit and it just creates some space. So why I said it doesn't really matter the length of this strap is because if you make it longer, you could go till this leg is all the way straight if that's easier to hold. If you're going to hold it a long time, there's a lot less effort involved if the leg is straight or partially bent. And I'm just pressing away with this leg and letting this left one relax and get a bit of a stretch here. So it feels really nice on the hip joint. If you wanted to make it even nicer or approximate more, which is what Allegra was doing earlier on. You could put another strap around your back here, around the knee, holding it here for you, and then it would just be the pressure, same straps. So I could take my other strap over my knee here and have it either holding onto it, or I could go around my back so I don't even have to hold it and pull it tight here, and then I wouldn't even have to hold it. So the strap really needs to be, the one that's uh, tractioning needs to be in your hip crease. So that has to be in your hip crease. The other leg is pushing it away. And then this one is optional as to where you want to have it as you're pushing away. You can try it on the other side. So I'll put it in my, on my hip crease. And then just to show you, I'll make this strap isn't a super long one, but I'll make it longer. And then if I had my other, another strap, I could put it around my leg this way too, around the top of my knee, right? So I could put a nice strong strap here, belts around, or a stretchy one that has some integrity to it. And then my foot would go in this strap here and I would push that away 
Right. And I could have myself just relax as that's happening now. Right. So I'm getting that hip traction on this other side now, just really lengthening out the hip away from the socket. So if somebody's really tight in there, this feels really nice and they can control how much pressure they're giving. Gets a little blood flow, gets a little traction at the hips. So it could be a really nice stretch. And then after that, going into the hip stretches, I mean, we've already sort of opened up, just makes it feel a lot less congested in the hips themselves around here. Okay. So that's, that might go along nicely with what you were showing us. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, that's what I was, I guess, the tractioning when I was telling you um, all to, when we had our one leg up in the air, telling it to go down a little bit. And like, I was when you were holding the strap and just kind of pushing your foot into the strap and the strap pulling into your pushing into your foot. That's what I was kind of going for, but I like suggestion better. Anyone want to share something else about hip? Um, I guess I could share. I was going to go more with working, working the glutes a little bit. One thing I've started doing is sideline series with the band, um, mm -hmm. trying to kind of simulate the springboard a little bit. And so, you know, that one's just, uh, you take a, if you have a loop in your band, and you do some sideline here, kind of, it gives you that nice feedback that we have with the springs normally, um, reaching and elongating the hip, uh, and then working from that elongated position to get the, the glutes to work, the glute medius. Um, I don't, we don't need to go through the full sideline series, but just to kind of give you that idea, um, and we can flip over to the other side real quick and just get ourselves a little warmed up. It's a little up and down. Genevieve, <laughs> how hard are you pulling there? Just a little bit. Uh, this is, I think, a little lighter band than what, um, you know, are the dark green bands or the blue bands. Okay. I'm, I'm pulling pretty hard. <laughs> um, but I don't think that's probably what you're feeling there with the blue band or anything like that. Um, and then uh, I've actually been really liking doing hip work um, on all fours. So, you know, going back to our old friend bird dog or pointed dog, um, finding yourself nice and square here and finding that, that support from your center <clears throat> and then squaring off and then just reaching back through the leg and feeling the um, glute activation here. Um, of course, it's always tricky with people who can't find their, their um, square position. But I liked, was it you like our last time who kind of mentioned looking down and finding Oh, yeah, right. I, yeah. Kind of so, yeah, I think, you know, finding that and then bringing yourself back to neutral and then floating the heel up. Um, and I've been, I've been sort of cueing this, like pulling the belly in a little further as you reach the heel up to counter that, um, that like pull maybe on the back that happens. Um, and so we just reach up and tap a few times here. And then float the heel up and hold it. And then turn the leg out in the hip socket. So just the leg in the hip socket and not lifting the hip up, which is, I find a really um, kind of challenging distinction <laughs> for myself. Um, so turning out and really making sure that those hips still stay pointing down toward the floor, those hip points. Um, and then you can do a little lift and tap here. And all at the same time, um, I like to use this image of this stance leg kind of wrapping the flesh of that hip around toward your sits bone there. Um, and kind of getting that activation through there to hold yourself stable. Okay, and then uh, let's do those on the other side. So reaching the right leg back, finding yourself square, 
<clears throat> holding yourself square and then floating the heel up, tugging the belly in a little further uh, the higher you bring that heel up. Again, wrapping the stance um, meat <laughs> around your uh, hip into your sit bone. Little tap. I also really like cueing people to really um, find the straight knee here, which I find is really hard for people to hold. <laughs> and then floating up and holding up, turn the leg out in the hip socket. So again, keep the hip points pointing straight down toward the floor and just turn out and really feel that activation in the rotators there. Tapping again. Last one, and coming back in, and then taking um, your ball, we're going to come back over to the left leg, so we're going to wedge the, actually let me show the right leg first so you can actually see, wedge the ball between your calf and your hamstring, so kind of right in at the back of the knee, and open up pressing the heel toward the ceiling without letting the ball go. Right. Mine's gonna wobble away here. <clears throat> so just reaching the heel up and holding there and sort of trying to grow in this position. So re continually reaching the heel up, drawing the belly in and elongating the spine. And I find pretty quickly my, my bit starts shaking. <laughs> <laughs> and then lowering down, and then lifting up again, holding for another little sustained moment. And down, and one more like that. And down, and then taking this out to the side. So still holding onto the ball, and just sliding the knee out, without, again, without lifting the hip, and back down. So sort of a little fire hydrant, doggy fire hydrant. And then sliding it out to the side and holding it, bringing it kind of through the air into that parallel position that we just worked on. So going through that space, challenging yourself to maintain the hips in position and then coming back to that side and then up and side and up and side and up, last one, side, and up, and bring the knee back. Other side. <laughs> All right. So, getting ourselves all square. Good. Pressing the heel toward the ceiling without losing the ball, pull the belly in and come back down. And again. And holding this nice sustained moment and come back down. One more like that, really reach, reach, reach. Keep growing in the shape. and come back down, sliding the knee out to the side. Keep the hip points pointing down toward the floor. This ball just wants to fly against my audience. All right. I kind of like having the ball back here for these side ones just because it kind of engages, you know, the hamstring a little bit and helps to disengage, I think, for me anyway, the um, hip flexor. Um, okay, sliding out to the side and then through the air, keep the hips pointed down, lift it up toward this, lift the heel toward the ceiling and then back to the side. Last one. And back down. <sighs> Thank you.
Okay, those those are my two little fun tidbitty ones. Good booty burner. Booty burner, yeah. <laughs> I love those. They feel so good on the whole glute hamstring connecting place and the connection for the hip rotators. I'm always trying to find how we can strengthen that, the crease, the crease, the Great. hamstring glute crease. That's where most tears happen in the hamstring. And I'm always trying to find ways to strengthen around that crease. And so the, the piece sets, I think these are fantastic, and Deb, you hinted at it in terms of not gripping the hip flexor. I think that's something that we should mention because a lot of people overuse the hip flexors instead of the abs for their work, especially as their abs fatigue. They tend to get really in their hip flexors and quads rather than in the, the abs where we want them. So finding ways to release the hip flexors, I think is key. This is a great one. Anything that pushes the glutes into the hips is great. So on quadruped, for example, with the leg up, that's, that's actually what's happening, right? We're extending, so the hip flexor can't work. And then Genevieve added that lovely ball idea of getting the hamstring firing that even inhibits the front structures more. So anything with length will get the hip flexors to shut off. And then I would mention in sideline, Genevieve had a sideline, which is great, and reaching long, and her setup was perfect. But I wanted to throw in there that the other thing she was doing, she was talking about activating the glutes, but you can't really activate the glutes if the leg's in front. So I'm exaggerating, but a lot of people bring their legs slightly in front, and it's a lot harder. You'll get some glute medias, but you definitely won't get any of your glute max, and a lot harder to get your rotators if your leg is in front of your body line. Whereas if you take it, in line with your body, or even a tiny bit behind your body, you really start activating that glute area a lot more. So I have switched to teaching most of my classes with that emphasis on the bottom leg could be a stability leg if they need it, but that working leg on top, taking it a little, just ever so slightly behind my body line, and then I can really get active in my butt a little bit more, and there's no risk that my hip flexor is taking over. So those are two great ways. The other great way, uh, Allegra started us in the coccyx curl, and the other great way to, I find, turn off the hips is to start there with that coccyx curl, but also with continuing it into that bridge. In the bridge, thinking about same line of that crease, the glute hamstring crease, pressing up into the hips. So I really then activate my glutes, and that helps turn off my psoas. You have to be careful for hypermobile backs that they don't arch their back. That's not what we're after. It's still long tail coccyx curls. But then from there, I'm wrapping under, trying to get this to open up. And I could sit here and keep cueing that, lengthening the spine, squeezing the glutes in and up to open the hips and then lengthening the spine, doing it again. So keep, keep opening those hips into a straight line and then lowering back down. So that's another really nice way to open the hips. And then where, when people start to get hip flexory, there's a couple places where you can totally notice it. Upper ab curl is one of them. So if you go into your upper ab curl, I usually cue it with tailbone staying down. So hands behind the neck, really supporting the neck. Tailbone staying down in neutral, coming up with the chest. But what you'll see for people who are weaker or just not sure how to isolate is the tail will curl while they roll up. So if I want to bring that to their attention, a lot of times I'll just have to say, hold it at the top, release the tail. And that way I can release those hips some. If the hips still don't release, or maybe in tabletop it's even harder to release, you can move to kind of the diamond shape. And that helps if I press the heels slightly together here, it really helps me not tilt my pelvis while I'm doing these exercises. Likewise, I could do it up here with a little diamond trying to relax the legs. It's a lot harder to engage the psoas if I take them just out of their efficient pull line. And then if I was going to do roll-ups, full-on roll-ups, I'd do it straight-legged rather than bent-legged. And that will help me get 
that work in the abs because I can't then grip here and pull, right, if my legs are straightened out and then come in up. So those are all ways to just kind of round our whole circle out that we've been talking about that would get the hip flexors to shut down a bit. Prone work is great too, all that glute series laying prone because then you can't flex the hip. You really have to get the back structures working in a lengthened position for the front of the hip. So those would be the other ones. Yeah. Anyone else have thoughts? Hi. Hi, um, hi everyone. So I loved everything that you all did. And so what I do is I have everyone lie on their backs and, and just start with like knees and tabletop just to like, you know, focusing on nice heavy pelvis, heavy ribs and get them warmed up with little marches here. And then I'll have them hold the right leg up, find the anchored hip, and then have them open out their leg to the side. Kind of like what Allegra did with um, the band, and then bring it back. But the other leg doesn't open, right? So your stability, you're staying stable in that standing leg, and it's opening. So it's kind of like opening like a hardback book. And so the ankle goes with the knee. So it's not an external rotation. You're just taking the whole thing out. Like you're about to open up a book. So your spine is the spine of the book. And so you're keeping your neutral, hips heavy, tailbone heavy. And you only go out as far just to find that range of motion where you have to like do it yourself instead of, you know, using the band, but you could use the band on this one as well. But I guess if you did this one, you'd either need to stay um, on one leg if you only had one band. And if you had two, you could do one of each. My right, mosquito just flew into my eyeball. And so he's going to open up. And you can hold it there and you can find, like keep it open and then find your other leg, like big toe side of the foot pressing down. Make sure that you're not peeling the hip up and then find it and bring it back here. So it gets that nice opening up a little bit, which I really love because it's just another way to like engage through the abdominals in addition to like letting the range of motion just be different than just up and down. That's it. Nice, I like that too. Great, great hip release always. We carry so much tension there. Do you guys have anything else to add? I don't know if you have tried it, um, but I've tried it and it helps um, for in the upper ab curl to keep the hips um, not coming into the coccyx curl, trying to keep them down. I have used a ring, I just experimented with this. And if I press a little bit out on the ring, because I, I do that too, I come up into little coccyx curls, just a mental thing to break also and strengthening. Inhale, exhale. And I find it really just, I guess the feedback of that just really helps me stay in that um, neutral spine. So that's all I wanted to add. It also feels good if you just have them hold that sometimes with that and you like put the circle on top and you just have them press out and it yeah. just all of that. And you can do it the same way. Oh yeah, or that way too. Yeah, less um, less choreography that way. Yeah, I love this one. You just hang out there, and they're like, "It's on fire!" You're like, "Burn!" Yeah, totally. One thing about that one, that one's hard. If you have um, like bigger body clients, it's hard to put the circle around there. Oh, that's that's yes, good good point there. Yes. Yeah. So if you do that, like have them have a band handy just in case. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. This this hip control here that you did was it is so challenging for somebody like me. It's like not even funny. It's <laughs> it's very humbling. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, it's like I, why can't I do this? I'm like, make it smaller. And she's like, but I don't want to. And I'm like, but just make it smaller. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be able to there. So it's that patience thing. Right. 
Um, I was also going to maybe mention um, one other spot that I hear clients often get grabby in the front of the hip, even though we're working the back of the hip, is um, uh, in clamshell. Mm. Um, and what I, I know we, we tend to say, you know, glue the heels together. Um, and just a cue that I found helpful for myself. Um, I, of course, I've got very like bony feet. So I find this like little groove in my bottom heel and I dig my left heel, my, my top heel down into the bottom heel. And if I find that little groove where it kind of sticks, it's not gonna move anywhere. And then I can use that as sort of that leverage instead of having to hold my hip in this bent position they use that as a little bit of leverage and then I can start from the back instead of trying to hold from trying to hold the shape. I don't know if that makes sense for everybody. There's sort of that nice little spot that like, it's like a little leverage. Anybody else finding it or no? Yeah. 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 I find too sometimes on this one, so my hip rotators are the tightest and weakest part in my body, I think. And so clamshell has been sort of the bane of my existence and sideline series. Don't tell. But so sometimes I find that I can't even get, I don't even know what I'm trying to get in a clamshell. Whereas I can get it more in a straight leg turned out, but then I could bring it in. And if I start by pressing it open myself, then I can square, hopefully I'm not rolling backwards, square myself forward, press the leg open, get the glutes to work, and pushing down, like you were saying, Genevieve, into the heel, that helps. And then I can hold it there and then roll it down a little bit and try and come back. So I think sometimes you'll see people doing clam and they're like this big, but I don't know if that big is really, like I feel really soft back here when I'm going only this big. So I'm wondering if, you know, maybe using what you're saying, putting it in the groove, pressing down more, and maybe even helping them open it or telling them to help themselves open it to feel back here and then work down and back up and down and back up instead of from down to up, working from up to down and back. Mm -hmm. So that might also help for us long, tight, weak rotators if, if that feels you guys can feel that. And using Genevieve's cue, pushing down into the groove of the heel really helps isolate that, I think, a little bit more. Control and isolate it. Definitely. I like the start with the leg turned out and then bring it back in. Yeah. Down. Yes. Wow, that's different. I like it. Because now you yeah. can feel it be open and still be And I do keep checking that I'm not rolling backwards because that would be so much easier. Great, you guys. Well, that was actually really productive. Thank you so much. I really love all your input all the time. Yeah, that's great. I feel better too now. So that's good. good. I'm so glad. I think I have to do this clam on this side though before we go. But while, while I do this, maybe we can think about what we want to talk about next time. Is there a particular topic that you guys are really interested in uh, digging deeper in or something that you're seeing with clients that you maybe feel like would be great to get help with? The, the swan, I find, is a really hard exercise to teach people, baby swan. Baby swan. So maybe thoracic opening and a swan. Yeah. I love that suggestion. Are you ladies okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. And thoracic, so thoracic spine and swan, maybe we'll call it that. So people can bring in their own ideas about how to open the thoracic spine, which is why swan is so hard. And like... With, when you have boobs, like not everyone can do a rocking swan because of... Yes, that is a good point. <laughs> then and conversely, the other, for, for guys, the swan is got, got to be difficult too sometimes, but yeah. Yes. Okay, we've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> good to see everyone.